Hello, welcome to another episode in the Mana Game tutorial series. Today, we're going to be implementing a sprite that points at the mouse. This is really useful for like shooter style games where uh, you want the player's weapon to point wherever the player is pointing their mouse. Um, and it's pretty simple, not that much code. So let's go ahead and get into it. I have here a blank Mana Game project. I haven't added any code to it. So let's go ahead and complete objective one, which is to get something on the screen that will point at a specific rotation. For this, we're going to need to keep track of a few things. Uh, the first one is the actual rotation of the sprite. Uh, the next one is going to be the position of the sprite. And then the uh, last one is going to be the texture of the sprite. Okay, and let's go ahead and load that content in the load content here. So I'm going to give some initial values. So rotation equals 0.0f. Then what we want to do is we want to set the position. I'm going to just do something like a new vector 2 of 250 by 250. So it's somewhere in the somewhere on screen, somewhere near the middle. And then for the texture, we want to load it in. So texture equals content.load. And then in angle brackets, specify the texture 2D. And then the name, mine is called arrow. So now that we have this, we can go ahead and uh, draw it on the screen. So I'm going to go inside the draw method here and make a sprite batch dot begin. I'm using pixel art, so I want to do the sampler state and I'm going to set it to sampler state dot point clamp. And then we want, gotta always make sure to end our sprite batch. Inside of there, we can make our actual draw call here. So we'll do sprite batch dot draw, and this will take in a few arguments. Um, if you have a modern IDE, it might tell you the different overrides, and we want the fourth, or maybe the fifth, the fifth override, which gives us the option to pass in a rotation. Unfortunately, it also gives us some other stuff that we don't really need, but it's whatever. So let's pass in the texture. We let's pass in the destination rectangle, which we can get by just grabbing the position and then giving it a size. So I'm gonna do a new rectangle here. And for the position of the rectangle, I'm gonna do position.x and position.y. For the size, um, my texture is actually 16 by 16, but that would be way too small for people to see very easily. So I'm gonna make it 64 by 64. And then we have to typecast these two integers because rectangles hold int values and vector twos hold float values. Next, we need the um, source rectangle, I believe. And the source rectangle for me, since mine is a 16 by 16 texture and I want the whole thing is going to be 0, 0, 16, 16. The next one we want is we want the color. So I'm gonna just do color.white so that it doesn't mess with anything. And then we want the rotation. And this is where we're gonna pull in that variable that we're storing. The next one is the origin. Now when we're rotating it, I'm rotating it around its center. So I want the, ro the, um, I want the origin to be at the center of the sprite. Now be warned, it's the center of the texture size, not the center of the destination rectangle size. This tripped me up a bit because I thought, why would it be like that? But it's not, it wouldn't be 32 by 32. In this case, it would actually be eight by eight. So I'm gonna do a new vector two and I'm gonna pass in eight by eight here. Next we want the sprite effects, which is just none for me. And then the layer depth, I'm just gonna put zero. Let's go ahead and see if we get a result from this code. So I'll run it. And there you go, we have an arrow here. Great. Let's go ahead and make sure the rotation's working by going into update and just incrementing rotation over time. So rotation plus equals, and then I'm going to just add the uh, delta time to it. So game time dot elapse game time dot total seconds. And we also have to typecast this to a float because that is a double value. Okay, let's go ahead and run the code. As you can see, our arrow is rotating, which is great stuff. Let's actually get it rotating where it points at our mouse. So the first thing we wanna do is we want to actually be able to uh, grab the position of the mouse, right? So we wanna do vec2 um, and then we want to grab the mouse position. So mouse position here. And then we can just do mouse dot get state dot and then we should have a position here. Now we can do two vector two to make it easier on us. And now we have the position of the mouse. Okay, so now that we have the mouse position, what we need to do is we need to get the distance from the mouse to the player of each component of the vector, in this case, just X and Y. So let's go ahead and declare a new distance variable here. So equals just a new uh, vector two. You could you know, easily store this as a member field as well. Um, and what we can do is we can just say uh, distance.x. And what we wanna do is we wanna grab that mouse position's X value and wanna subtract the position of our player. We can duplicate the line and just change these two y's and you have yourself the y value. Now, what we need to do here is we need to convert this to a singular value, right? Because our rotation is going to be that singular value. And so what we can do is we can just assign our member variable to this, um, this value here. 
So it's going to be an ATAN2, which can, you know, has a little bit of docs here. So returns the angle whose tangent is the quotient of two specified numbers. So basically it's a bit of trig magic. <laughs> And all you got to do here is you got to give it a y value and an x value. And for us, that's going to be the distance dot y and the distance dot x. Now this returns a double. So what we need to do is we need to retype cast this down to a float and that should be good. Now this is telling me that I can um, simplify this. So sure, if that makes you feel better, then that's a simpler way to do it, I guess. Okay, well, let's go ahead and see if this works. Let's run this code. All right, it looks like it works. That was a few lines of code, but we're all good. Cool. Now, there are some things that messed me up a bit because when I first got into game development, I didn't know much about trig. Um, the reason that this points at my character right away is because I have my um, arrow pointing at the origin. If you know anything about polar coordinates, um, the angle of the angle of theta starts at zero, and when it starts at zero, it's pointing to the right, and then it will keep increasing until it reaches two pi, and then it will sort of like loop over. And so basically, if you want to have this set up differently, uh, like with an offset, like let's say yours is facing forward, what you would do is you would subtract 45 degrees. So let me go ahead and show you that. I'm going to do this and I'm just going to uh, sub, I'm gonna add 45 degrees to simulate that this is like facing forward and show you what the result would be. Um, so as you can see, it's like a little bit behind my mouse. So hopefully that clears things up for you and you found this tutorial helpful. If you like this tutorial and you want to see more of it, consider supporting me on Patreon so I can continue making more videos like this. If you have any questions about this tutorial or anything in general, uh, game development, I would highly recommend you join my Discord server, linked in the description. There's a ton of game developers there and including myself, and we love to answer questions uh, for all of y'all. So yeah, thanks for watching. Have a good day. See ya.